Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, I'll be doing a full three-player playthrough of Exoplanets. In this game, each player will be able to create entire planets in a growing solar system, and then they will compete back and forth with each other as they try to foster as much of their type of life as they can on the best planets for their current scoring situation. I will explain how the game plays while we're actually playing it, so let's jump in. Out here in the middle of the table, we have the star at the center of the solar system that we are going to be working to build out and foster life in. Uh, there are four planets already in place in the innermost orbit, and let's go ahead and start things off with our turn. We will be playing the game from the perspective of the purple player over here, and you'll notice that we have these two space tokens in front of us. They directly match the ones that are out in the middle of the table, and all of us have two of these. We uh, draw three and then only choose two of them to actually start the game with, and each one of these can be used as victory points if we meet the criteria on it. Uh, this species in flames is two points if we create a species right next to the uh, star, and this species in oceans will give us four points if we create uh, species on two different ocean planets, but instead we could discard these to get uh, bonuses that are down on the bottom. And I'll talk about the specifics of those later when uh, they make sense. For now, uh, for the first phase of our turn, what we need to do is found a new planet to build it out into the solar system. And there are these two options in the middle of the table for us to choose from, although if we don't like either of these, we also can go to this big bag right here and uh, pull two randomly out and decide one. But I think right from the get-go, we like the look of this one right here. Next up, we have to place this planet down into the solar system, and it must be directly adjacent to a previously placed planet, so we're not allowed to jump spaces on these tracks. And what happens, and I think we want to put it down here, is you take the token that was in that location, you put the planet down just like that, and then this token, we can flip it over and look at it secretly, and this is a new one that we can add to the first two that we were already looking at. So this one says aggressive parasites. This is a, uh, another um, condition that we can go for. In this case, if we create a species and uh, dominate the planet by kicking out somebody else's species, then we're going to get two extra points, or we could just discard this, uh, or actually install this onto a planet to reduce its cost. But either way, these come into our area now, and this new planet is going to generate resources for us. The first thing that always happens whenever you place a planet out is you are going to take an energy from the central star in the middle. And this is actually the game clock. In a three-player game, there are 15 of these tokens in here, so each player is going to take five turns throughout the game. And now we look to the two uh, icons that are adjacent to each other with the new planet that got placed down. We get to gather up each of these resources, and it's important to note that this energy right here did not come from the middle, but came from the supply outside, and both of these can now come into our area. As the last part of the phase, we're going to go ahead and draw a new planet out and put it right here because you always need to have two of these showing up here as options for everyone. With this planet created, we are now done with the first half of our turn, and we can now move into the second half, which is life creation. And I'm going to go ahead and put all of my resources right here so we can see uh, how we're going to spend them. And uh, we have three energy, one water, and two gas available to ourselves. Uh, everybody starts with one of each of these at the beginning of the game. And if you look out to all these planets that we're going to try to create life on, there is a cost for that life creation. We see that this right here is an energy and a gas. This is also an energy and gas. This one is an energy or a gas. So there's a lot of uh, those requirements out so far. And this one is just an energy. In fact, the only planet that requires water at all right now is this one right here, which requires one of each, which is the most expensive type of planet to found life on. The other thing that we can do in this phase of our turn is spend as many of these space tiles as we want. As I mentioned before, they can each be used for victory points if we meet specific conditions, and the opposite thing we could do is spend these in order to evaluate the bonuses on the bottom. And if there is a gray bottom like this, it's going to be a one-time effect. In this case, if we look here, we see that we can pull two of the resources that we want right into our hand, so that's a pretty nice thing. But then again, this is the Species in Flames uh, token, which is going to get us two points if we create a species on a planet that is directly adjacent to the star. And that is definitely something that we would like to go for, especially when we consider we do have this Species in Oceans one, which gives us four points if we create species on two different water planets. And this right here is a water planet that is right next to the star. So it's a really good synergy of these two bonuses to try and get a species going on this location. So that means uh, if we look down here, it costs an energy and a gas, but this third one that we just picked up, um, it would give us two points if we kind of speciate on a planet and kick somebody out. Or instead, if you look down at the bottom, it gives a discount on the uh, energy cost for planets. 
This is not a gray bottom, it's a blue bottom, which means it's a permanent ability, and I think we should use this right now. And the way this works is you choose one of the planets, and you will tuck this underneath. But before you do that, if you look at this symbol right here, that is associated with the black hole down here. And that means that when we use this as kind of a uh, counter cost, we're going to slide this under and take one of these black hole tokens. And that's fine for now, but uh, something pretty bad is going to happen to us once all of these tokens get removed, and there's no way to lose these. So at some point, this effect is going to hit us. In this case, black holes will eat up some of the space tiles that we have in front of us. So we certainly don't want all these to go away while we have these good ones in our hand, uh, not quite actually evaluated yet. But uh, with that, we've now placed the tile down. And now let's go ahead and start creating life. So as I mentioned before, we want to create a species on this planet. And the species uh, symbols right here are essentially the fourth level of life, which means you have to foster life on that planet four times to get to the species. And so let's go ahead and start things off since this is the one that we care the most about. Normally it's going to cost an energy and a gas in order to put a life token down on there. But with this uh, new reduction of one energy, it's just going to cost one gas to do this. So we can go ahead and take this uh, life, put it right down there. We're going to spend the gas. And now we're going to grab one of these creation tokens. Now you get one of these every time you activate life on a new planet within a given turn. So we've done this planet right here and we get this token. And these work in a similar way to these black holes where you don't actually get anything for them until all of them are gone. And the moment that happens, then everybody who has these actually gets a benefit. In this case, if you look down here, you can spend two of these creation tokens to get one resource of your choice, which means you never really want to have an odd number of these when this gets cast in but right now we have one of them so we can put that right here next up i figure we should create life on a new planet so we can get another one of these creation tokens and be at an even number which is good and i figure let's go ahead and put it down here now i don't have a huge reason why i would go here or here because both of these can be done with just one energy but i just have a gut feeling that maybe this is going to be slightly better for us so we're going to spend this energy and that's going to go into the main pool not back into the star area and now we get to grab another one of these creation discs and if you look down here, there are only four left. And since we easily grabbed two on our first turn, I think it is um, pretty safe to assume that these four will get gobbled up by the time we have another turn. So having three of these doesn't really make sense. It's going to get cashed in, and we won't get any bonuses for it. And there is no strong reason for us to um, go ahead and put a uh, life down on this planet as well as this one. We might not want to spread ourselves too thin um, because you can save as many resources as you want between turns. But I do think the last thing that we should do on this turn is let's go ahead and spend another one of these gas in order to put a second life down onto this planet. We need to get to four total, and sure, we could save these between rounds, but I figure uh, placing this down is a good idea to try and ward off our opponents from trying to work their way in over here as well, because there could be only one species on a planet, but multiple types of life. So it's important for us to get to four life here before one of our opponents might want to do that, and this is a nice spot because of the discount. And it's worth noting, at the end of the game, each life token is going to be worth points equal to the cost of creating life on that planet, and this discount does not reduce the amount of points that these are worth. So uh, this is a very lucrative spot to, to have people actually go down onto. So we want to kind of defend our position. And with that, I think we are done with the main part of our turn. So we can take these resources back as well as these creation tokens. And now the green player gets to take their first turn. For their planetary creation phase, they've decided to grab this rocky planet right here, and they're actually going to put it down here, kind of furthering out the uh, line that we already started on our first turn, so that's going to go right there. They, of course, always get one of these energies, and this spot right here is going to give them another energy and gas from the main pools. It's now time for them to start creating life, and they're going to start by going over here, and that's going to cost them an energy and a gas, and that is also going to give them one creation token. And next up, they are going to spend this space token right here. And it looks very similar to the one that we had on our first turn. It is a uh, discount for water. And they're going to slide this down underneath the spot that we did. Although if you notice, when we do this, there is this little um, solar symbol. It's kind of similar to the black hole symbol that we grabbed, except it is going to be taken from this area right here. And just like these other spots, this is only activated once all of these uh, solar flare uh, tokens are taken. And when that happens, a solar storm happens, and everybody with these tokens is going to lose some gas, and the person with the most of these tokens will actually lose some water as well. But they will gain some energy. So it's not the worst thing in the world to have these solar storm uh, things in front of them. And now they're going to create life again. This time it's going to go over here. There's a discount of one water, so they don't need to spend their water. They'll just go ahead 
ahead and spend this one energy and this gas and gather a, another creation disc. And now they are done with their turn. It's now time for the yellow player's turn, and they're going to start off by creating a planet, and they've decided to choose this super Earth uh, planet right here. And I didn't expressly point it out. The art kind of gives away what kind of planet it is, but these little circles up at the top also show uh, which type it is. So this is a little blue circle for a blue, uh, water planet, and this is the uh, green symbol for the super Earth planet. We, of course, have to pull a new tile out for the tableau. Next up, yellow, of course, has to place down their planet, and they're going to put it right over here. They get to take this space tile, and now that's going to generate one energy for themselves. And then right here, we see two more energy spots. So that's going to come from the main supply, and now they can start creating life. They have decided to start things off by spending this energy right here to create life down onto this rocky planet. That's going to create one of these uh, creation uh, disks for them. And then next, they're going to do a similar thing where they spend one energy, and they're going to put a life over here onto this planet, which again, it needs an energy or a gas. And the moment they do that, this last token is going to go into their area, and play now stops because this has been completely depleted, and all players get to resolve exactly how they're going to take their bonuses. So uh, the yellow player can go first. Uh, they're going to return both of these. And again, for every two of these tokens, they get to take one of of these resources and they decided to grab a gas. We also have two of these creation discs to return and I think we're going to go ahead and take a gas as well. We don't have any of that just yet and it's required uh, in order for us to keep uh, putting uh, these uh, life creation tokens down onto that planet which is right next to the star. And lastly we have the green player. They are going to discard both of these and they're just going to go ahead and take another energy. All right, so the yellow player can now continue playing their turn, and they are going to go ahead and spend one of these space discs, but unlike uh, us, they are not going to evaluate the bottom. They're just going to do the top, which says the initiation of life, and it's going to generate them one victory point for the end of the game. Now, you might be wondering how I've been knowing what all of these uh, requirements are for the victory points. Well, it's pretty simple. Um, the uh, text at the top gives you a hint, and down here we see this 21. Well, that matches up with this uh, player aid right here that every single uh, person has in their uh, area. It's uh, explains all of the different uh, symbols as well as all of the uh, victory point chits. So we see this one right here says that if you create life on two planets with a cost equal to one of any resource, uh, whether that be energy, gas, or water, then you get the one point. So uh, that's a pretty easy one to achieve, which is why it's only worth one point. And this is a one cost planet, and this is a one cost planet. So this token will now go face up in the yellow player's area for the rest of the game, and they'll know they have one extra point when the game is over. After cashing that in, Yellow now wants to get back to the business of creating life, and they're going to go ahead and spend an energy as well as a gas, and that is going to create life on this planet right here that the green player went on their first turn. It has the one water discount, so they got to get in there for relatively cheap. And as I mentioned before, um, each life on these planets is worth one point for each of the costs. So this is definitely a nice discount spot to potentially uh, rest control and get some good points. But again, that's only for the end of the game. And that is a new planet that they placed on this turn. So they get to take another one of these creation discs now that the, uh, the area has been refilled. And lastly, they are going to go ahead and spend this gas and this water to create a fourth life for their turn. So this is kind of going crazy on this turn. And they're going to put it down right over here. And that is yet another planet they're going on to. So they'll get another one of these tokens. And with that, they are finally done with their turn. All right, it looks like it's now time for us to take our second turn of the game. So we're going to go ahead and build one of these two planets. We could, of course, draw random from the bag, but I think these are uh, reasonably good for us because they're both ocean planets, and we do know that we are trying to uh, make this thing work over here where we get a species on two different ocean spots. And they are pretty significantly different from each other in that this is a one-cost spot, and this is a three-cost spot. So realistically, when we look out here, there's only one ocean currently in existence. So the second one is probably going to be the one we're going to try to put a lot of life down onto in order to try and put a species on there eventually and score those points at the end of the game. And as we know, uh, each life token on these spots is worth points equal to the number of the uh, cost to put life down. But uh, one thing I didn't mention is that whenever you have a species down on one of these, it's actually five times the cost instead of four times the cost, which you would normally think. So there's an, uh, an extra special reason to uh, try and score these. And considering we are going to try to get a species down, I think it probably makes sense for us to try and get this one done. Even though this costs four resources to get a species down and this one costs 12, 
but it's only the second turn, so maybe we can try and push for that. And uh, we do want gas because it would be great for us to put a species down on this spot this turn, and with the energy discount, it just costs one gas to uh, create life over here. So we only have to do that two more times. We only have one gas right now, so I figure let's go ahead and place this right here, which is actually going to generate two gas for ourselves, which will be nice. And then, of course, one energy from the star in the middle. And then we get this tile right here. It says oceans and gases. So this would get us four victory points if we were to turn this in when we had a species on a single ocean planet and a single gas planet. And that works pretty well for us considering it looks like we'll have half of this done on this turn. But uh, it's worth looking at the bottom too. Down here we see that this is a permanent ability. You slide it in underneath the planet. And then what you do is you put a minus three points token on the two adjacent planets. You of course have to take a black hole token, which isn't great, but that is just straight up minus three points for both of those planets, making um, these uh, hard earned gains maybe less effective. So if somebody played this down onto um, the one next to this one and made this one minus three after we put all that effort into it, that might be a bit of a bummer. But either way, I think we might try to make the scoring work for this. And that is gonna complete our planet creation phase which means we can now jump into creating life. So let's go ahead and start over here. And it is worth noting that uh, we could spend one gas and then put a life uh, token down onto it and then spend another gas and do that again. But you are allowed within a given turn to just spend the amount of resources you need to jump up to a species if you need to, and you don't necessarily need to have all those tokens. So uh, this is uh, one reason, for instance, why the yellow player is not in a terrible position. They only have uh, two more of these life tokens available to themselves, but if they just pay a lot, they can jump right up to getting a species down. The only um, uh, exclusion to that is that you're never allowed to create a species on a planet that you did not start the turn off with life on it. So you can't go from zero to species within a given turn. You have to start there with at least one down. So now let's go ahead and spend both of these gas to get uh, to the second and then, uh, sorry, the third and then fourth level. We can then pull these off, put the species down right there. We, of course, uh, take one of these tokens. Uh, technically, these are called stimulation tokens. <laughs> and we can put this down right here. And now for the rest of the game, nobody is allowed to put a species uh, or, or life at all down onto the spot. So we have locked that in. And also, we can go ahead and uh, reveal this right here, uh, Species in Flames. We have a species on one of the planets that is adjacent to the star. So this is going to be worth two points for us at the end of the game. At this point, I think we should get another one of these life tokens down, but I just realized something kind of went awry at some point. We should actually have one more of these gas tokens because we picked one up when we cashed in the stimulation uh, tokens down here uh, on the yellow player's turn, and then we should have picked up two gas on this turn. So uh, I somehow messed that up, but now we are back to where we should be. And now let's go ahead and put life down onto this planet over here. It's pretty expensive. It's going to cost one of each of the resources. It'll give us this uh, stimulation token right here, and I think that is going to round out our turn pretty well. So we can go ahead and move on to the green player. The first thing that we should do is draw another tile for the options for the green player to choose from. And they have actually decided that they don't like the look of either of these, so the alternate option is they can dig into the bag, they get to pull two out, and whichever one they choose, they can then put down on top of one of these to kind of create a uh, pile. So now they are going to consider both of these options. In fact, it looks like it's gas and uh, water on either side, so the bigger question is do they want more costly planets or cheaper ones out in the system? And they've decided to go with cheaper ones, and they're going to go ahead and put this down right there to kind of deny uh, this nice cheap uh, planet from some of their opponents because whenever you pick from these you have to choose from the top so now they have to choose where they're going to be placing this down after considering it they've decided to slide the planet in just like that and now they get to generate one energy from the star and it looks like they're going to get two gas for placing that planet down it's now time for the green player to start creating life, and they're going to begin with this planet that they just placed down. So that is going to cost them one energy as well as one water. And when they put the life down right there, they will get one of these stimulation tokens. And now before they move on, they will reveal this uh, card right here. It says Quick Adaptation. And this one is going to give them two points at the end of the game uh, if they can show that they have created life on two planets with a cost of two. And they have done that right here. It doesn't have to be within the same turn, so this is now two points in the bank for green. 
And next up, they're going to go ahead and spend one energy in order to put a life down on this planet, <laughs> which is a very popular spot right here. And that is going to generate a stimulus token, but it is worth mentioning. Uh, the reason the green player is going here as opposed to perhaps over here is because there's so many people here. Uh, they are thinking that, well, maybe they'll try to um, build a species on this spot, but whenever a species happens onto a planet that has opponent's life uh, tokens, well, those tokens get kicked off and each person gets one resource of their cho choice for for each of those token, uh, the life tokens that gets removed. So effectively, they're spending one energy to go down here and get the stimulation token, as well as turn that one energy into potentially something wild that they might really want later on in the game, potentially if somebody builds a species right there, which seems somewhat uh, likely. So uh, they grab both of these tokens, which means uh, these immediately need to get cashed in, and everybody can now uh, go ahead and cash theirs in and turn these into uh, resources. The green player has two of them, which means they can grab any resource of their choice and they're going to go ahead and take an energy. Next up, we are going to return two as well. And when you consider we currently have two energy, I think we should take a water or a gas and let's go ahead and take the gas token. Lastly, the yellow player also turns these in and they are also going to be taking a gas. So looks like everybody is interested in this particular resource right now. Let's now come back to the green player's turn, and they've decided to spend this energy and this gas right here in order to create life on this spot, or I guess they're developing the life that they already had over there. And since this is the first time that they are creating or developing on this planet, that is also going to generate for them one stimulus token, and they could do it again. Uh, they have the energy and the gas available, but they would not get another stimulus token for it, so they're going to go ahead and hold off and um, the turn with just one of these tokens, but they figure that it's possible that they won't all be taken away before they get to take their next turn. Next up, it is the yellow player's turn. As usual, they have to pick from one of these two top planets, and they've decided to go with this one right here, and they're going to slide it in way up here, up along the top. Uh, so that right there is going to generate one energy for themselves, and this uh, location is going to make an energy, and this one right here is going to get them a gas. We, of course, refill up this uh, area down here, and now the yellow player can start creating life, and they are actually just going to create a species on this planet right here. So they already have one life, which means they are allowed to create a species, although they have three different um, uh, development actions that need to happen first, but each of these actions just costs one energy, and they happen to have three energy. So they're going to spend all three of those, and that will immediately put this species token right down there, and as I mentioned before, that's going to kick off both of these tokens back to their respective players. And for each token, we are going to get a resource of our choice. So uh, when it comes to us, um, we couldn't really decide if we wanted gas or water. We took a gas last time with this um, the stimulate token. So let's go ahead and grab a water and now the green player. And they've decided to grab an energy, and uh, funnily enough, this is the cost uh, it was for them to put that token down, but it essentially paid itself back, and they got a stimulation marker out of it on that last turn. So they're pretty happy with how that worked out. At this point, the yellow player is going to continue with their creation phase, and they are going to play this uh, rocks and oceans uh, space tile, but it's not going to be for the points. Instead, they're going to utilize it for this discount. It's a pretty familiar one. We notice it's the same as the one down there. It reduces the cost uh, with water, and they're actually going to slide it in right over here, right next to this other one. That is going to generate one of these solar flare tokens for the yellow player, and now this spot is just going to cost a gas in order to uh, generate life on it. Oops, I just realized they forgot to take a stimulation marker when they developed life on this planet. And now they're going to keep on going and they're going to spend another one of these uh, space uh, abilities. And this is going to once again be one that they tuck underneath. Uh, and if we look down here, we see that uh, this token says uh, number of life levels on the planet equals that number of resources, which means wherever they tuck this down, uh, they will immediately generate that number of resources, and they're going to do it right here. So we notice there is another one of these um, uh, solar storm tokens, so they're going to grab that, and now there's just one left until the um, solar storm actually happens. They can kind of slide this in here, and since uh, there is a species on that planet that is life level four, so they can generate four resources of their choice right now. The first resource they choose to take is going to be a gas, and then the next three are all going to be energy, and they are going to keep going with the uh, life creation part of their turn. And in fact, they have decided they are going to create a species on this planet as well. If we look down here, we see that the uh, cost is reduced by one water. The green player actually put that one down on there, but the yellow player is really um, coming in fast to take this over. So that means that each step is going to cost an energy and a gas, and they are three steps off. And if we look down here, they have three energy to give up. 
as well as three gas to give up. So they can now plunk uh, this species down right onto the spot. Uh, this will come back, and the green player can once again take a new resource from the supply. And in this case, they're going to grab a water. Developing life on this planet, of course, generates a stimulation token, and with that, the yellow player is finally done with their turn. Alright, it's now time for us to take our third turn of the game. If you remember, one of our major goals was trying to get a species on two different planets with oceans, and we gave ourselves the high um, task of trying to make that happen over here, which is just going to take a ton of resources, but I hope will be worth it because, well, species make so many points on those spots. Uh, we're a bit jealous of the uh, yellow player being able to get the species down here on a three-cost spot for that discount, but... Right now, we have not seen any more of those discounts just yet. So I figure with the two energy, one water and one gas, I think we should go ahead and try to get a water and a gas so that we can potentially do this twice or at least do it once and then take a look at some of our other options. So when we look down here, I figure let's go ahead and take this one and let's put it right over here. Uh, we could um, put it over there, uh, but realistically, they're both going to generate the same thing for us. This is a water on the end and this also is a water on the end. This one creates a new water on the end, which is good because we definitely like seeing water around. So we place that down right there. We will generate an energy and then get the water and the uh, gas. And now let's take a look at the tile we just picked up. It says species in oceans. Oh my goodness. So we um, already have this, right? And you are never allowed to actually use both of uh, the tiles for the uh, scoring condition. So what that means is with both of these, we can use one of them to score and we can use the other one for the bonus down at the bottom. And if we look here, it's actually the same on both of these. And these are mean. Uh, we might want to consider doing it this turn. Well, we'll take a look at it. But what this does is um, you take the entire line of planets down from where you actually place this down and you add the requirement of one more gas onto each one of those planets. So you make it even more expensive. And considering we cannot score both of these, we are definitely incentivized to uh, drop one of these down. Also, that will uh, cause the last one of these tokens to be taken off because they both have that on here. And uh, as long as we make sure that we don't have any gas or water in our supply when that happens, then we'll be fine. In fact, it'll be good because we uh, generate one energy just for returning these tokens. We don't have to actually lose anything. So this might actually work out pretty nicely for us. Okay, let's go ahead and now start creating life. And as I just mentioned, we don't want to have any of this gas lying around. So I figure let's just go ahead and create life twice over here. Uh, we know this is something we want to make happen at some point anyway. So that will go ahead and spend two gas to water as well as to energy in order to put two of these life tokens down onto that spot. So we are just one away now from being able to put a species down in there. And obviously we should be able to get to that on the next turn. And when we put that down, we are gonna get one of these stimulation tokens. And at this point, like I said, we should um, go ahead and use one of these. And what I would love to do is put it down over here because it looks like the yellow player is poised to get even more points for this discounted planet over here. But the problem is that all of these planets already have one of these bonuses tucked underneath them. So we can't actually fit these down. You can only have one of these under each planet at a time. So I figure what we should probably do is not use this just yet because getting a stimulation token is nice. Let's go ahead and spend this energy in order to put a life over here, kind of competing for the yellow player, but mostly to get this token so that we can turn that one energy into one of anything that we want because we'll have two tokens and maybe we don't need energy as much anymore because you always generate one per turn. And now let's go ahead and spend this one right here. We have no resources in front of us and we are going to tuck it down over onto this spot and we're going to make this this entire uh, row right here more expensive. We're mostly doing that because the yellow player was here already and we don't really know what they want to do, but we don't think we are particularly interested in doing any of those things. And this seems like a nice time to take advantage of the fact that uh, this is right here. Also, this is going to cause the green player to lose a couple resources, which is nice. So anyway, let's go ahead and slide this under here just like that. Uh, we, of course, take this token right now and immediately have to resolve it. First things first, let's go ahead and put these cost modifiers down onto the whole row so that we remember that it's a lot more costly to generate life over here. Next, we have to evaluate the solar flare. And if you look down here, you'll see that it's going to cost us uh, everybody two gas. And this right here means the person who has the most of those solar flare tokens is also going to lose a water. And then everybody who puts tokens back on here will generate an energy. So we are going to put this back here and we have no resource to lose, but we will get an energy, which is nice. 
The green player, unfortunately, they're going to put this back here and lose this gas. And the yellow player over here has the most of these flares, but unfortunately, they just spent all of their stuff. So I think we'd like to target the yellow player a little bit more, but that seemed like a decent thing for us to do on this turn anyway. And now we can continue on with our life creation phase. Well, when we look back at it, we've got uh, two stimulation markers already and just one energy left. I don't think there's really anything else for us to do. So we can now pass on our turn and play now goes over to the green player. For their planet creation phase, they've decided to pick up this super earth uh, uh, planet right here and they're gonna tuck it in right over there. So that's gonna generate them one energy and that's also gonna get them one water and one gas for those two spots. Green now moves into the life creation phase for their turn, and they have a few plans up their sleeve. The first thing that they're going to do is spend this gas and this energy in order to develop a little bit more life on this planet right here. That's going to generate a stimulus marker for them, and that's going to be the last one from the token. So they can immediately put both of these back down onto the thing and take a gas as a bonus. We also have two to return, and we can generate a water with that. And lastly, the yellow player also has two to turn in, so they will also get a resource, and they're going to grab a water as well. Play now comes back to the green player, and they are going to use this microbe space tile for the points. So if we look right here, we see that this is tile number eight, and if we look on the sheet, we see that it says they have to create three levels of life on any planet with a cost of equal to two. And they have that right down here, three levels, and the cost is two, so that is three points in the bank for green. And now they're going to go ahead and spend a gas and an energy to once again um, foster life on this area, which is going to create green's first species. That is the fourth level, so that gets placed just like that. And now they're going to go ahead and use this tile right here, which says Species in Flames. It's the same one that we had to score off of this, so they have a species on one of the planets adjacent to the star, so that's two more points for them at the end of the game. And with that, the green player is finally done with their turn. All right, so yellow now gets to start off their next turn, figuring out how uh, they are going to be building the plants. Although I do want to change one uh, tiny thing. When they took their uh, stimulus bonus, they really should have taken a gas. I was uh, not fully thinking their position through when uh, that got evaluated. So let's just say they had that uh, gas instead of the water. When it comes to planet picking, the yellow player is not particularly interested in either of those. So they're going to come to the big bag and they're going to pull two out and pick between these two right here. And they've decided to go with this planet right there. So they have to take this one and put it down on top of one of these two spots. And they figure they'll do just like that. They now have to place this planet down and they've decided to go right over here. That will generate them one energy from the star as well as two gas from the planet. Now they're going to move into the life creation phase and they are going to simply take these three gases and put them all right down over here because on this planet they don't need any water at all. They just need gas. So all three of those is going to get them their second, third, and fourth tick up. So they're going to put their third species on the board. That's going to go right over here and each player only has four species total. So they have committed three of them already over here. And also it's a little interesting that yellow's over here, green's over here, and purple's over here. There's no particular reason why that needs to happen. It's just kind of been the way that the game has flowed so far. And of course, they are going to take a stimulation marker when they developed life over there. And now they get to reveal this goal right here. It says species in rocks and it's four points, but uh, they only get this if they have a species on two different rock planets, which they have now been able to pull off. And with that, they are now done with their turn. All right, it's now time for us to take our fourth turn of the game. We, of course, need to pick out a new planet to uh, build out into the solar system. And right now, we have an energy and, and water. And in order to finish this spot off and put a species down, we are going to need at least one gas. So I think uh, when we look out here, there is a gas on the end there, and that is pretty much it. And neither of these have gas. So uh, we could dig into the bag to try and pull something else out that does have gas, or we could just go with one of these two. And I think that we may as well just go with this one right here. I think that um, they're both um, going to get water no matter what we do on that location. And ah, you know what? These are not really uh, speaking to me that much. Let's go ahead and change our mind, put those back there, and draw from the bag. 
I think it really would be nice to get a little bit more gas out of the situation. And it looks like we missed. <laughs> uh, these are very similar to these down here. Um, they're both uh, one cost uh, with the energy, and they're both going to give us a water. So it looks like that is what the game wants us to do. And between oceans and this um, super earth uh, spot, we don't really care particularly much between the two. So I figure let's go ahead and put the ocean down right there. And we can plunk this down. I guess it is going to give even less options to my opponents, which is a slightly good thing. And let's slide this in over there. That's going to generate us one energy from the star, as well as one gas and one water. Before we move on, let's take a look at the space tile we just picked up. It says the other sides of the star. So that's going to give us three points if we are able to uh, get a species down onto a planet that is matched on the opposite side of the star. And unfortunately, we're going to have species on these two spots, and these are the opposite. So uh, it's very unlikely that we're going to get points for this. But down below, we see that we could instead play this down. It would give us one of these black hole disks, which isn't great, but it would add a minus two points modifier to every single planet in that orbit. And I think when you combine this with this Oceans and Gases one, which also has a black hole on it, we could potentially uh, give quite a few negative points over to the yellow player who is doing really well. Like they have three species out and we currently have one and the green player has one after uh, the same amount of turns. So maybe we'll go on the offensive this turn. But first things first, let's start off the creation phase by spending one energy, one water, and one gas in order to activate uh, life over here, which gives us a stimulus token, and we can plunk down this species over here. So we have finally done that. We spent 12 resources to make that happen, and I hope that ends up being worth it for us. And now we can go ahead and reveal this uh, tile right here to our opponents, showing that we have species on two different ocean planets, so that's going to be four points for us at the end of the game. At this point, it looks like we have one energy and one water left over, and I figure we don't have any more goals that we're gunning for. We have these two, but we're going to use them as uh, mean options. Uh, so I figure let's go ahead and spend this energy to put this life token all the way out over here. It just costs one energy to do it. It's going to give us another one of these stimulus disks, which we should be able to use uh, before our next turn or on our next turn, which will be our last turn. Uh, I think that's probably worth it. Also, as I mentioned before, you're not allowed to create a species on the uh, same turn where you had none on the planet. You have to start with at least one. So we're setting ourselves up where if we have three energy next turn, we could put a species down in here, which would give us a decent amount of points. And now let's go ahead and start playing down the mean stuff. So we can start with um, the other sides of the star. And I think we are definitely trying to target the yellow player. And if we hit the uh, green player, that's also fine. So if we are considering we're going to be hitting an orbit, we don't want to hit the first or second orbit or the fourth orbit. So we want to go into the third orbit somewhere. And it looks like this is a three cost. This is a three cost. And we can't go down here because it already has something here. And that is also three cost. So it doesn't really matter between all of these. So we'll go ahead and slide this one under here. We're going to take one of these tokens from the black hole, so we now have two of those. But when all of these get removed, the penalty is you just lose one or two, if you have the most of these tokens, of your space tiles in your hand. So the ones that you've scored already, those are safe, and we are planning on having zero tiles in our hand. So if this happens, we're totally fine with that. So we can now go ahead and slide this in, and now we can take a bunch of these little modifier tokens and spread them out so that everybody knows that this is now in effect. We can put this right here for that planet. Let's see, the third planet over here is going to go there, and then there are two more. This is going to go with that negative token. We've just been putting all sorts of bad stuff out on the map, and then most importantly, this one's going to go over here, reducing the score of this spot by two. And now let's go ahead and take this one, and we'll slide in over here. We're just really targeting the yellow player with all these actions. That's going to give us another one of these tokens, but again, if it happens um, when it's not our turn, that's totally fine because we don't have any of these tiles to actually discard. And when we slide this in like that, it's now going to put a minus three right there and a minus three on this spot if somebody ends up going there, which I think at this point is now a lot less likely. Okay, with all of those tokens spread out, I think we're now done with our turn. We've got a lot of these discs, but just one water that we can't really do anything with right now. So that's going to finish our fourth turn, and now the green player gets to go. It looks like they are starting off this turn with two water and one energy available to themselves. Next up, they have to create a planet, and they're going to go ahead and do this Super Earth 1, and they're going to develop it right over on that part of the galaxy. This, of course, generates them one energy from the star, and now that's going to generate two more energy from the supply. Oops, I just realized at this point we should only have four left in the middle, not five. I must have made a slight mistake at some point, but either way, now we're back to where we should be. 
To start out their life creation phase, they are going to spend an energy and a water in order to put a second life down onto this planet right here, which is going to give them a stimulus token. And next up, they are going to spend one energy in order to take a uh, stimulus token as well as a life, and they'll put this one all the way out over there. At this point, they could stop, but they have decided to push themselves a little bit. They're going to spend this one energy and put another life token down over here. That's going to get them a third one of these stimulus tokens. And the reason they're doing this is mostly to exhaust this pool, because as soon as this happens, they have to put all of these back, and that means they have three tokens, which means they're only going to get one back, because um, you always round down for this. And when they do this, they're going to grab a gas. But a big reason they did this is because right now, the yellow player only has one token. So um, by bringing this back, the yellow player is not going to get any bonus for it on their turn. I suppose they might um, uh, place down on a couple different spots, but they're trying to um, play a little bit of uh, defense there. And also, they didn't really feel the super need to have that one energy. And we were going to get these anyway. We have two of these stimulus tokens, so we can bring those back over there. And I think we will probably take an energy with it. With that, the green player's turn is done. And now yellow can start things off. They currently just have one energy. At this point, they're not super happy with either of these options, so they're gonna dig into the bag and choose from these two options. They like the look of this Super Earth one right here, and they're gonna plunk this down right over there. And for this one, they are gonna place it right over here at the very end. So that is gonna generate one energy from the star, and that'll also get them a gas and a water. Now it's time for them to create some life, and they're gonna start by spending a gas and a water, and they're going to put this down on the planet they just created all the way over there, which is going to generate one stimulus. And now they have decided to spend an energy to create life on this planet, kind of uh, competing over here with green, which is going to get them a stimulus. And one more time, they're going to spend this energy right here to put life all the way over there. They're just spreading out all over the place. And that's going to get them a third stimulus. And with that, they are now done with their turn. They've decided not to go ahead and spend either of their space tiles. All right, it's our turn once again, and this is actually our fifth and final turn of the game. At this point, we don't have any space tiles in our area to try and uh, guide us as far as what we want to do with this overall turn. But one thing we do know is that creating species is a really good way to make points because at the end of the game, uh, every life token is going to be worth uh, points equal to the cost to put life down. And the species get a nice bonus. Uh, they are five times the cost instead of four times the cost, which you would normally expect since they are level four life. And when we look over here, we already have a token in here. So all it's going to take is three more bumps in order to uh, speciate on this planet and kick our opponents out. And right now we have one energy, which means we just need two more energy to make that happen. And looking down here, fortunately enough, both of these have energy listed on them. So we should be able to pull off um, this thing and then maybe do some other things with our turn. It's going to depend on what space tile we actually get to pull. So now let's uh, consider which one of these two we want. We could take this one and and activate it over there, which uh, would get us the energy we need. And this one, I suppose we could do something pretty similar with it. But let's go ahead and uh, roll with this one. <laughs> we'll put a planet on this terrible spot and see if anybody's convinced to try and do something with it. So we'll put that right there. We will get this um, uh, space token, and it looks like it is diversity of life. This one is going to be worth two points if we have uh, life on two different types of planets, and currently we do. We have the ocean planets here, and we also have a super Earth over there. But the bottom part has a hand and two resources, which means we could spend this in order to take two of any resource. And it's possible that that will be worth more, far more than two victory points for us, but we can consider that soon. First of all, we have to take our resources. So we will get one energy from the star that is definitely depleting. We'll take another one from the supply, and then we'll also get a water. And uh, the last thing that we should do is refill this spot right here. So we'll pull another tile out of the bag, and it's another super earth. Let's now move into the life creation phase, and let's start off by just taking over this planet and kicking everybody else out. So that is going to be three energy, and that will bump us up to level two, three, and then four, which lets us put this down right here, clearing both of these out. And both of our opponents now get to grab a resource of their choice. The green player decides that they want energy, and the yellow player decides that they want gas. We, of course, can't forget that we use a stimulus for this, so we will bring this over here, and now 
I think that we really have to protect this over here. If you remember, there are uh, tiles like this that can put minus threes on two adjacent uh, planets. And right now we have a planet right in between two really good spots for us. So I think we really should use this life diversity for the bottom bit. It's going to generate two resources for us, which is nice. Also, when we tuck this under here, it's going to generate one solar flare, which I don't think is going to matter for us. But most importantly, we're just uh, blocking up this spot. So it's going to be a lot harder for our opponents to just really mess us over and make us lose a lot of points. And now we get to take two more resources. So we have two of this uh, water available to ourselves and no specific goals beyond just trying to get life out onto planets and try to do as best as we can. So I think that uh, that gives us quite a bit of uh, opportunities. We could come down, well, we don't want to go over here because there's a minus two. Um, these are all quite expensive. This one would cost four resources, which I think we could just, no, we couldn't make that one work. But over here, this one is two resources and we can share with just the creation of life with our opponents. And that's probably the right thing to do. Although over here, this one doesn't have a negative on it itself. It's just one of each of the three things. So I guess we could put one life down onto here for three points, or we could get two life over here for four points total, two times two, which I think is better. So let's go ahead and use our two resources to grab two of the gas and then immediately spend both of the those along with the water to get both of these life tokens down over here. I just realized that this tile was way far out on the edge of the camera, so uh, I'll just show you right here. That was indeed water and gas, and now we are coexisting with the yellow player, but we're doing a little bit better here. The last thing we have to do is take a stimulus marker, which is not really going to affect us because our turn is now over and uh, any resources at the end of the game don't actually count for anything. But what this does mean is it's a little bit harder for our opponents to generate some extra resources on their final turns. Speaking of which, it's now Green's turn to go, and they've got quite a few resources in their arsenal. First things first, they are going to create a planet, and they've decided to do this one, and they're going to slide it in right over there, which is going to generate one energy from the star, and then another energy from the supply, as well as a water. They can now move on into the life creation phase, and they're going to start things off pretty simply by spending two water and two energy in order to uh, develop life on this planet twice. Uh, that's going to bring them from uh, two to three all the way up to four, which means they are going to generate a species right over there, which works out pretty nicely for them. This development also means that they are going to take this uh, stimulus token and then immediately put it back, and now everybody else has to give theirs back as well. We have two of these, and like I said, we have no more turns, so I don't know, we'll take an energy, it doesn't super matter, and now the yellow player is a little bummed because they have three to give back, and they're only going to get one bonus resource. In this situation, they've decided to go ahead and grab an energy, and now the green player is going to play this diversified evolution level, but not for the points, they're going to do it down here because this shows that they can take one resource per, per life level on the planet that they tuck this under, and they're going to do it right under here. So. The uh, first thing that happens is that is going to activate one of these black hole tokens, which is going to be the last one on that uh, marker. So that means immediately this is going to come back. And if you remember, down here, we can see that it's going to cost one of these space tokens from everybody who returns these tokens. And whoever has the most of these tokens to return is going to lose two of these tokens. Well, the green player, they currently have two of these tokens. So they're going to lose this one right here. And we have three of these to return, but no tokens at all in our area. So that didn't really impact us. Green now gets to gather up those four resources, and it's going to be three energy and then one water. Next, they're going to plunk all three of this energy down onto this planet right here. That is going to be enough for them to create a species over there because they already had the one level. And so that means that the yellow player is going to get kicked out. This is all going to come back to the supply. Yellow, of course, gets their Constellation uh, resource prize, and they're going to take an energy for it. And now the green player is going to bring out their aggressive parasites, which is going to be worth two points to them at the end of the game. Uh, and this is activated when they create a species on a planet and they dominate the planet by kicking somebody else out. So they were definitely aggressive over there. And the two points is certainly nice. When they developed life over there, they, of course, got some stimulus. So that's one token right there. And now they're going to spend all three of these energy, this, uh, sorry, this energy, water, and gas, in order to create life on this planet, which will create another stimulus. And they're going to finish things out by spending this one energy over there, putting yet another life down. They're just kind of spreading out, trying to grab some last-minute points. And that's going to create one more stimulus over there. So we can bring all this stuff back to the supply. And the green player is now done with their turn.
All right, it's time for the yellow player's turn, and this is the last turn of the game. They're going to start things out by digging for two new planets from the bag because they don't like the two that are on the supply. They've decided that they like the look of this one right here, and they're going to slide in all the way down over there. So that's going to generate the final uh, energy from the star as well as two water from the supply. They're now going to start off their life creation phase by spending this space tile for its bottom ability. We see that it is going to generate a one energy discount where it is placed. So they're going to put that right over here. And this is going to cover up one of the black hole tokens. But considering this is the last turn of the game, the yellow player does not seem too phased by that. And now they're going to go ahead and create life right over here. That's just going to cost one gas and one water. And of course, when they put that down, it's going to generate one stimulus token for themselves. Next up, they're going to take all three of these energy, and they're actually going to spend it over here on this planet. Uh, that's going to put three of these life forms down, and that doesn't seem like a great idea because it is worth minus three points, but uh, it's obvious that they have something up their sleeve. And when they did that, they, of course, generated one stimulus. And now uh, we notice that they have two more of these uh, space tiles left over, and the first one that they are going to want to activate is this one. So down the bottom, we see that it is going to add plus two points to everything in the orbit of the planet you put this down on. And they're going to slide this in right over there. It's going to generate one more of these black hole tokens. And now all of the perimeter planets are going to get two points. So that worked out pretty well for them. At this point, they do have one more space tile left over, and they are going to use it. Uh, they're going to do it for the bottom, and we see that it is going to add uh, plus three points to the two adjacent uh, planets. So they're really cashing out here. They didn't have a very powerful uh, fourth turn so that they could set themselves up for a really nice fifth turn. So when they slide this in here, that is going to activate another one of these tokens. And now they get to add a plus three to this planet that nobody cares about and a plus three to this planet, which the yellow player definitely cares about. At this point, the yellow player only has a water resource left over, and while it is true that this spot right over here could be uh, uh, created with life with just a water resource, they don't have any more of the life tokens. They just have this one uh, species token that they weren't able to get out. So with that, they are now done with their turn, and the game is now over, and we can now go into final scoring. Let's go ahead and start with ourselves. We were able to pull off two of these throughout the game, so that's going to be six points right there. And now we have this uh, species, which is a 5x multiplier, so that's 5 times 1, or 5 points for that one. And over here, this is a 5 times 3, or 15 points, and 5 times 2 for 10. Over here, this is just a 1-cost planet, so that's 1 times 1, or 1 point. And lastly, over here, we have 2 times the 2-cost, so that's 4 points, plus 3 more, so 7 points for that planet total. And when we add all of that up, we have a final score of 44 points. It's now time to calculate the green player's final score. They were able to pull off four of these throughout the game. And if we look down here, this is one times one or one point. We've got five times two or ten. Uh, another ten pointer right here. Down over here, we have one times three or three points. And then all the way up here, we have five times one or five more points. And when they go ahead and add all that up, they have 38 points. And finally, we have the very well spread out yellow player. Uh, down here, this is a three cost planet. So that's one times three, but then it also has a plus three and a plus two. So that is five, uh, six, seven, eight points total for that planet. Uh, down over here, this is a minus three and a plus two. So that's just a positive one plus three more. So four total over there. This one right here was going to be 10 at 5 times 2, but then it lost 3 and then 2 more. So that's 5 points total there. Uh, 15 here for 5 times 3. Uh, 5 times 1 for 5 points here. This is going to be 1 point. And then finally, all the way over here, this is going to be 1 times 2 or 2 points plus 3 more. So the yellow player definitely did the best at utilizing all of those green positive modifiers. Although we'll see how these negative ones apply to them as well. And when we finally add all that up, Yellow ends up winning the game with a score of 48 points. And with that, we have completed one full game of Exoplanets. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. My main goal here was to try and show the thought process behind us as the purple player as we tried to figure out what the best things for us to do on our turns were. But I also wanted to show a couple different ways that the game could be played from a strategy perspective. Uh, in particular, you notice that the green player was really trying to score as many of those objectives as they could. Uh, and because of that, they uh, actually activated less of those space tiles for the abilities down on the bottom. 
And I think uh, that that is probably part of the reason why the yellow player had such a dominant position, because they were a little bit unchecked until they appeared to be doing very well. And, uh, you know, once they had that, um, that strong surge in the middle of the game, uh, we tried to uh, make things worse for them by getting some of those um, red uh, negative tokens down in their area, but it was kind of hard to slow them down at that point. I think uh, maybe if uh, us as a purple player and the green player had tried to team up a little bit more against the yellow player, it would have brought things into uh, alignment a little bit better, but um, uh, we were trying to uh, capitalize on uh, a couple of those scoring things, but also trying to get the species down. But I think our big failing was investing so many resources into that one planet that did not have a discount. It was three um, resources to actually put life on there. And I think that, you know, the yellow player did a lot better by getting um, some of the discounts or actually utilizing the discounts that the green player uh, put on there, uh, kind of hijacking uh, one of the green player's planets. And I think that's also one of the reasons why the green player did not do so well. They didn't really protect their investment as much as they could have. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's uh, definitely part of the reason why the yellow player prevailed so much. And I do think that this was a pretty good playthrough of the game. It showed you um, a lot of, uh, well, pretty much all of the mechanics and a lot of the different uh, interactions between um, the uh, the goals that we're going for and just trying to jockey for the best positions out there with our life. And I think that is going to pretty much wrap up all my thoughts on this playthrough. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting the channel through Patreon, including all of these producer level pledges. If you too would like to directly support the channel, you could do so at patreon.com slash Games, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to see more full game playthroughs like this one, as well as in-depth board game reviews and monthly vlogs, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.